Hey folks, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at inverse variation, part of the nonlinear section of the General 2 HSC course. If you haven't looked at my previous lesson on direct variation, can I ask you go ahead and look at that? Um, certainly that will help you um, understanding how to do the, uh, the inverse variation. Just as a quick recap though, for our direct variation, we introduced the new formula of y equals k times x or kx um, where k was referring to as the constant of variation which kind of worked out a little bit like I guess the gradient of the y equals mx plus b um, except there is no y-intercept or y is zero. Um, once we did that we subbed in the letters for y and x depending on the question. We then use information to find the constant of variation which enabled us to get the equation of variation. So the good thing is for inverse variation that the steps are identical. The only difference is, is the equation to start with. Um, inverse kind of means upside down. Instead of it being y equals k times x, the formula is y equals k divided by x. So it's kind of the opposite, I guess, of the um, direct variation. How do we know if it's an inverse question? Well, it must state the word inverse. It might be inverse proportional or varies inversely, etc. Once we've got our equation y equals k on x, we then do the same steps, that is removing the y and the x and putting in the letters that they've given us, finding the constant of variation, and then rewriting our equation. Let's have a crack at it. Okay, the cost per person to hire a reception center is inversely proportional to. So straight away I'm thinking y equals k over x. There's no other squares of square roots, that's all I have to look at. Um, so the number of people attending. So I'm going to rewrite that before I even look at the question. And instead of having the y, I'm going to put c equals k over, instead of x, I'm going to put n. So that's my equation of variation at the moment without my k value. Um, part A says to find or what is the cost per person when there are 20 people attending. So we need to go and find out the value of k on our own. So in this question, I've got a value for, um, for n. I've got 50 people and I've got a cost of $36. So 36 goes with the c is. I've got k divided by the 50. The opposite of divided by 50, of course, is times by 50. So I'm going to do 36 times by 50. I get 1800. So k equals 1800. I'm now going to rewrite that equation. C equals 1800 over n. So I've now got my equation of variation. So now let's address the question that they gave us to start with. So again, the question states, um, what is the cost so at C, if there are 20 people attending, so it's 1800 divided by 20, and I simply plug that in my calculator to get $90. Alrighty. And that makes a bit of sense there, I, I would imagine. Um, And that's because, think, if for the 50 people, the cost per person is $36. So the less people you have, um, the more expensive that, that ticket's going to be. Um, part B says how many people are required for the cost to be $25. Okay, I'm going to put 25 for the C. I've got 1,800 divided by N. And now I need to solve that equation. There is lots of ways we could do that. For example, I could put this over 1 and simply flip this to make it n over 1800 um, equals 1 over 25. I can now times this by 1800 to get my answer. So 1800 times 1 over 25, I get the answer of n equals 72 people. That's one way to do it. Um, otherwise, I could have times by n and then divided by the 25 which would be exactly the same thing as this method here. Either way, we get n equals 72 people. Okie dokie. Next question. The number of people waiting at a circular key for a ferry is inversely proportional to, straight away I'm thinking we've got y equals k over x, the very first step I want to do. Um, 
Okay, and there's no squares or square roots, so I'm going to quickly change that and put n equals k over t. I'm going to put a little rectangle around that. Now, I may need to find the uh, constant of variation, so k on its own, which I do. Look at part a, it says find the constant of variation. So I'll do that as part, as part of a. So I'm going to chuck in the values I've got here. So I've got, if there are 64 people, so that's the number of people. So I'm going to put 64 equals k over, and the time in minutes is 3.5. So in order to find k, I'm simply going to times this by 3.5. So 64 times 3.5 is going to be 224. So I've got my k value. So that's the first part. Now part B has asked me to specifically write the inverse variation equation. So I'm going to sub it back in to get n equals 224 divided by t. All right, and that's my answer done for B. C, how many people are waiting at Circular Key um, four minutes before the ferry arrives? Well, the number equals 224 divided by four. So n equals, I'm still going to do that my calculator, 224 divided by four, I get 56 people. And the last one for D says how long before the ferry arrives if there are 28 people waiting. So that 28 people over 224 over T. Um, I can times it by T up here and then divide it by 28 here. I'm going to get T equals, so 224 divided by 28, I get eight minutes. And I've answered my question. Okay, I think we've got one more question, folks. Um, again, pause this one if you want to give it a crack and see how you go. This will be a little bit more challenging, this question. The maximum speed in kilometers per hour um, of a truck going up an incline is inversely proportional to ooh, the square of its weight. So I've got y equals k over x, but it's not just x, is it? It's the square of x. Uh, if I want to rewrite that with some letters, I'm going to use uh, maybe S for the speed equals K over, and I'm going to use weight for, uh, W for the weight, sorry, so W squared, and I've got my equation of variation without the constant, of course. Um, a truck weighing five tons goes up the incline at 64K an hour. What is the maximum speed of a six ton truck at the same incline. So I'm gonna to need to rewrite this to find K. So we've got here five tons, that's our weight of course, with an incline of a speed of 64 kilometers. So 64 goes with the speed, I've got K over, and I've got the five squared. Now opposite of divided by five squared is times it by five squared. So I get K equals, I'm gonna be doing 64 times five squared which I get 1600. I'm now going to rewrite the formula once again. Uh, finally, I guess, S equals 1600, that's my constant of variation, over W squared. That is my equation of variation. I can now use this formula to answer the question, what is the maximum speed, so S, when we've got a six ton truck, so 1600 divided by six squared, so I'm simply going to put that in my calculator and I'm going to get the answer of 44.4 uh, recurring. And now remember this is a speed, isn't it? So um, meters, or no, kilometers per hour. Um, so it says the nearest kilometer per hour, so equals 44 kilometers per hour. And I've got my answer. Alrighty, so folks, again, the formula for inverse variation um, is k over x. Remember, first of all, um, let's say write the formula down. Number um, number two, sub in the letters. Number three, find the k, which of course is your constant of variation. And number four, um, we say rewrite the equation of variation. That's with the k value in. And then finally five, answer the questions given.
Okay, so it's exactly the same for direct variation. It's just you're using the y equals k over x. Make sure if it's a squared, you put a squared in. If not, hopefully Bob's your uncle. Have a great day, guys, and let me know if you need any more assistance with inverse variation.